All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write basic ionic compounds and their formulas. A formula is just the, uh, the written uh, form for some of the chemicals, so H2O, that's a formula. Um, CO2 is a formula, HCl. There are formulas for ionic compounds, and we're going to focus on the most basic kinds, and these are called binary ionic compounds. And binary means two, so very simple ionic compounds. One metal cation and one singular um, anion, uh, which is just one atom. Uh, sometimes you can get more than one kind, uh, more of them bunched together, but we're just going to focus on the simplest ones for one metal and one non-metal put together. So let's try working on these ones here. So I've got aluminium and chlorine. So if you find these on the periodic table, I find that aluminium is over here. And going by the rule, uh, this one here will form a positive three charge. Uh, I'll just fill in the blanks also with the uh, non-metals here. So the nitrogen here forms a, a negative three charge. Oxygen is a negative two charge. Fluorine is a negative one charge. And the noble gases have a zero charge because they've already got their uh, full set of electrons. So they're not going to steal or donate any of their electrons to achieve anything better because they've already won. They've already got their uh, full set of electrons on their outer shell. Oh, and also on this side here, we've got positive 1 for group 1, and we've got positive 2 for group 2. So aluminium, it's going to be a 3 plus charge. And we're mixing it with some chlorine atoms. So chlorine here, it forms a negative 1 charge. This thing here has to combine together such that the net product is neutrally charged overall. So if we just do the sum right now, 3 take away 1, we've still got some positives left over. We need to deal with this such that the whole compound is neutral. And the way we can do this is we can multiply up or down some of these ions. So I could have more of these chlorine, uh, more of these chloride ions to balance out the aluminium's positive charge. So I need about three of them. Three negatives should balance out those three positive charges. And that's what we get for our final formula. So when we write the final uh, thing, uh, we don't write the charges on top because the charges have been balanced. And so that's, how, that's our final written answer for the formula for a combination of aluminium and chlorine atoms. Let's go to the next example. We've got barium and oxygen. So if we go looking for barium, barium lives over here in the periodic table. Oxygen lives over here. So uh, barium lives in group 2, so it forms a positive 2 charge. And oxygen over here forms a 2 negative charge. And let's take a look. Well, it looks like the charges are already balanced. 2 negatives balances 2 positives. So there's nothing more that we need to do with it. We just simply write it as BaO, barium oxide. Let's do the next one. So we've got sodium and sulfur. So let's go looking for those elements on the table. Sodium lives in group 1. And sulfur lives underneath the oxygen here. So sodium forms a positive 1 charge because it lives in group 1. And sulfur, it lives over on this side of the table. So it's going to be a, a 2 negative charge. So now what can we do to make sure that this compound is neutrally charged overall? Well, uh, I can have more of these sodium cations. If I've got two of these, then that should balance out the two negative charges that the sulfur is carrying. So that will be our formula. Na2S, sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide. Uh, the next example, we've got magnesium and phosphorus. So we go looking for magnesium. So here's magnesium. It lives in group two. And phosphorus lives over here in the table. So uh, we write down our working again. So magnesium group 2, so therefore positive 2 charge. And we have phosphorus, which lives over here in the right-hand side of the table. So that's going to be a negative 3 charge. Uh, while I'm at this stage here, I just want to point out a, a fact that I seem to see that uh, some textbooks do the following. So when they say a 2 negative charge, Sometimes they write it that, this way, and sometimes they write it like this way. Either way seems to be fine, so I tend to interchange them um, not on purpose. It's just what happened, whatever comes out 
first through my head. Um, so either way is fine. So if you're getting confused if I write the si negative sign first or afterwards, don't worry about it. They both mean exactly the same thing. So if I just erase that. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got uh, magnesium 2 plus, phosphorus 3 minus. It's not quite balanced overall, so we need to do something. And this is when we have to apply a special rule. I mean, you can do a bit of um, trial and error, but it is a little bit more complicated than the previous examples. I think you'll agree with me. And one trick we can do is we can do what we call the crossover rule. So if we take this number 2 and cross it over, so it goes into this corner next to the phosphorus. So 2 goes there, and we throw away the positive sign because we don't want that uh, charge symbol anymore. And we do the same process for the 3. So that 3 goes over here, we forget about the negative sign, and what do we get? So we rewrite this again, magnesium, and there's a 3 next to it, um, and the phosphorus has a 2 next to it. Two next to it. So that's the result that we get. Now let's check if this balances out. In the final, we've got uh, three magnesium uh, cations, and each one of them is carrying a two positive charge. So three times two positives gives me a, a six positive overall. Uh, we've got two of these phosph uh, phosphide ions, uh, and each of them has got a three negative charge. So um, two times three negative, that's six minus, so that balances out. So that trick works very well for when you get situations where it's not immediately obvious uh, what the ratios will be for the cation to anion, uh, the magnesium to the phosphide. It'll be uh, very useful for situations like that. And it's usually for situations when you've got uh, two, a two plus and a three minus, or a three plus and a two minus. Uh, that tends to be the case where you would apply it. Otherwise, you could just use the regular method that I've just been using in the couple examples above. All right, let's go to the other way around. So let's start with the formula and write the name. So here we got um, K, which is uh, potassium. Oh, hang on, I've just got to enable my layer here. K is for potassium, and Cl is for um, the chlorine atom. In this case, it's an ion, so we call it chloride. And we just write the following, so potassium. The reason why potassium has a letter K for a symbol is because it's a Latin name for callium, so that starts with a K. For some reason, they changed the name. Uh, and chlorine becomes chloride because now it's an ion. And if you, uh, if you don't know, uh, if you're not familiar with that rule where the uh, ending of the name changes, check out my uh, previous video on how to recognize and also name uh, basic ions. Uh, that, that should take you through um, how the name changes. Let's do the next example. We've got AG. AG is for Argentum, which is silver. So AG is over there, silver. And there's two of them. And we've got sulfur, which is over here. So uh, the metals, by, by the rule, is that their name doesn't change when they become an ion. So if it's a silver metal atom, it's still a silver metal ion. So we just say silver. Uh, so we can write the same thing there, silver. Now, sulfur is a non-metal, so, uh, so the suffix changes from sulfur to sulfide. And uh, when it comes to ionic compounds, you don't need to do any special um, uh, prefixes because there's a two in there. That's not, that's not mentioned when you describe uh, the ionic, form, uh, ionic compounds. You'll only do those things for um, covalent molecules, things like carbon dioxide. Can you see how there's a prefix for that? Dioxide implying there's two oxygens on there. Um, and you've got other situations as well. Uh, but for ionic compounds where there's a metal and a non-metal, those di, tri, mono things are not included at all, which makes things simple. Let's go to the next one. We've got sodium, so we've got to find sodium. Sodium is called Na, on the, or the symbol is Na because it's for natrium, which is also a Latin name. Um, and we've got nitrogen, which then becomes nitride. So let's write this down. Sodium nitride. Done. Okay, guys, I hope this helps. Um, 
hopefully you can um, go to a, go to the my website page. I'll include a little bit of extra uh, practice problems so you can um, have a go, and also some solutions so you can check your answers against um, the answers. All right, see you later, guys. Bye.